This is Common Core State Standard Support video in mathematics. This is standard KCC.C.6. This standard states, identify whether the number of objects in one group is greater than, less than, or equal to the number of objects in another group. For example, by using matching and counting strategies. Now, first of all, students must understand that we begin with one set or quantity, and we compare it to a second set or quantity. Also, students must be very aware that when comparing two quantities, there's only three possibilities. Either the first set or quantity is greater than the second, it's less than the second, or it's equal to it. Those are the only three possibilities. We can lay the foundation for these numeric comparisons by using analogies uh, using standard English context. For example, uh, we can do things like comparisons using taller versus shorter or older versus younger. So for example here, Natalie is shorter than her father. Now we're making a comparison, but we're not interjecting any numbers in here. Another analogy would be something like this, where Pablo is older than his brother Henry. Students need to realize also that comparisons have direction. For example here, the tree on the left is shorter than the tree on the right, so we're going from left to right. But we could easily uh, do the comparison in the opposite direction. We could say that the tree on the right is taller than the tree on the left. However, to lay the foundation for numeric symbolism, where we're going to use greater than or less than symbols, the direction of the comparison should be from left to right so that the symbols will match. So let's start off with an example where we have two quantities, two sets, and they happen to be equal. Now, one thing that we need to do is change the spatial orientation of the objects to focus on the idea that we're comparing the quantities and nothing else. So we can do something like this, or maybe rearrange them uh, something like this, uh, to again emphasize that idea. It's the quantities that are being compared, nothing else. We can also do something like this. We could uh, possibly maybe change the color of the items to again focus on that idea that we're only comparing the quantities. The standard says to use matching and counting strategies. So let's uh, look at matching. So in this example here, uh, we match this one from the first set to the other one in the second. Then we match those together and we match these third ones together. And this works just fine as long as we have you know, small amounts. Now let's uh, refer to the counting strategy. So we count the quantity that we have on the left. We have a total of three. And then on the right, we count again. So on the right, we also have a quantity of three. What's good about these kind of activities is that we can address other standards simultaneously. So for example here, uh, their standard KCC.B.4C. Understand that the last number named said tells the number of objects counted. Also, the number of objects is the same regardless of their arrangement or the order in which they're counted. And so we're doing both here. So we are addressing this other standard at the same time. There's this other standard, KCCA3 that says write numbers from 0 to 20, represent a number of objects with a written numeral. So here we can do the same thing. We can represent our quantities uh, with the symbolism, in this case with the, the numerals 3 and 3. There's yet another standard that we can address, KCC.C.7. Compare two numbers between 1 and 10 presented as written numerals. So after we've done uh, our comparisons with the actual physical objects, we can also write it down uh, symbolically, and now we're comparing them as written numerals. So orally or in written language, we know that 3 is equal to 3. Now the question is, would kindergarten students be expected to use the equal sign? And the answer is yes. There's yet another standard we can address, KOAA3. This one states decompose numbers less than or equal to 10 into pairs in more than one way, for example, by using objects or drawings. 
and record each decomposition by a drawing or equation. So there's the statement right there. So yes, students uh, would be expected to write this symbolically using the equal sign. Now let's take a scenario where it's either greater than or less than comparison. And let's start off with these uh, apples. So we can start off with a matching strategy. But what happens when you start getting into bigger numbers, students might get confused as to, well, which one did I already match up? Which one goes with which one? So here's another possibility, another suggestion. Uh, what we can do is this. Uh, rearrange them and then take the top group and arrange them horizontally. Then we can easily match them up and not lose track of what goes with what. So we can uh, do like so, match up the first one, match up the second, match up the third, match up the fourth. So at this point we can easily tell, well we've got equal quantities right there, we have four and four. Uh, I've got more on the top so I know that uh, you know, the, the top group is going to have more than the bottom group. Now let's look at the counting strategies. We can incorporate that, we count the top group, there's six, we count the bottom group, there's four there. Now, we line these up like this for a purpose. What we're really doing is laying the foundation at the kindergarten level for the number line. Uh, if you can visualize or actually get something physical like a wooden dowel or something that represents a line, again, notice what we're doing. Uh, we're laying the foundation again for the idea of the number line. Students can see, like here, that our larger number of six is further to the right than our smaller number of four. Students will see that as a number is further, further to the right, it's larger. And if a number is further to the left, it's smaller. We can also address the decomposition idea back in that standard KOA A3. Here, okay, we can decompose the six on top to a four, and then a two, and of course, that's our whole quantity of six. So let's look at our original uh, situation. We've compared the numbers. We know we have six on the left and four on the right, and we can also write the numbers down, uh, represent this symbolically, so we can address uh, standard KCC C7. We know that six is greater than four, now the question, should we expect kindergarten students to use greater than or less than symbols? And the answer is no. It's not until first grade that we have that expectation. Standard 1NBT B3 states, compare two two-digit numbers based on meanings of the tens and ones digits recording the results of comparisons with the symbols greater than, equal to, and less than. So the expectation doesn't appear until first grade. Now, it's up to you as the teacher to decide whether or not uh, your kindergarten students can handle this symbolism using the greater than or less than sign. But if you want to attempt this, if you want to see if they can handle it, uh, here's what you can do. So in this situation, we think that this is the greater than sign. Now teachers have developed all kinds of little tricks and, and acronyms and so forth, alligators eating stuff, things like that. Here's a nice simple little way for students to remember which symbol is which. And again, it doesn't involve any memorization or anything. Here's all that you need the students to do. Have them draw a vertical bar that connects uh, the top and bottom segments of your sign. And then do the same thing further to the right in the interior. Now notice that you have a longer bar here and a shorter vertical bar there. And there's a direct connection to the actual quantities involved. So you have the longer bar here, so you should have the larger number on the left, 
And then over here, you have the smaller of the two vertical bars, so your smaller number correspondingly should go over here on the right. So let's reverse the quantities. Let's put the uh, 4 on the left and the 6 on the right. We know that 4 is less than 6, and we think this is a correct sign for less than. Well, let's check. Again, draw your vertical bar there. Draw your second vertical bar here. And the smaller bars to the left, so that should be where our smaller number goes. The larger bars to the right, so that should be where our larger number is. So now we have a high degree of certainty that we have the right symbol here for less than. Let's take another scenario and uh, let's uh, look at this uh, less than context. And let's use our counting strategies. So on the left we count them up, there's six. On the right we count them up, there's seven of them. So we know that six is less than seven. And again, if you want to see if your students can handle it at this level, uh, we think that this is a correct symbol for less than. And again, we do our little vertical bar uh, strategy. And yes, it checks out. We have the smaller number on the left and the larger number on the right. Now let's combine our matching and counting strategies. Let's rearrange these horizontally like we did before. Let's count the top group. There's six. Let's count the bottom group. There's seven. And again, the nice thing that you're doing here is that you're laying the foundation for what happens on the number line. We know that six is less than seven. And we think this is a correct symbol. And again, double check. Draw our vertical bars to make sure that the uh, size of the bar corresponds to the size of the number. And so we're done. Uh, and we have, a, again, a, a high degree of certainty that we have this stated correctly. A couple of other items. Uh, teachers should use instructional language that matches the language of the standards. Now, that doesn't always apply because sometimes the language of the standards is more for the teacher, not for the student. Uh, but in this case, we should state the comparisons using greater than, less than, or equal to. And the reason being that expressions such as larger than or smaller than can be misleading because they can refer to size rather than just quantity, and that might cause confusion with students. Uh, so again, uh, in this scenario, stick with the language of the standards. Use greater than, less than, or equal to instead of substituting other phrases such as larger than or smaller than. As you saw from these activities using manipulatives, you can address several other standards simultaneously. You can address a lot more than just standard KCC.C.6.